It was a tale of two halves in Sunrise, Florida. On today's edition of the show, we're going to discuss how the first 30 minutes in the Panthers-Kings game cost the Panthers two points and how their comeback attempt fell short. All on today's edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Your Locked On Panthers, your daily podcast on the Florida Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into this Saturday, January 28th edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, or it's your team every day. Thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first lesson of the day. I'm Armando Velez. You can follow me on Twitter at Monoman12. Follow the show account on Twitter at LO underscore FLA Panthers. And thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first lesson of the day. Don't forget to send in your screenshot of your subscription to the Locked On Florida Panthers YouTube channel and your five star rating to me at Locked on FLA Panthers at gmail.com or at LO underscore FLA Panthers on Twitter for your chance to win two free tickets to the Florida Panthers versus Tampa Bay Lightning game on February 6th. Good luck, everybody. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook partner of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. So, Cats fans, uh, what a what a horrible way to come home to after just a somewhat encouraging January when the Panthers have spent the most of their time on the road, a lot of back to backs, coming home for one and then back on the road for some more games and just coming out flat. I remember when I went to uh, South Florida early in the year for their game against the Coyotes. I think it was Matthew Kachuk who said it is like some of the most important games to win is not only that final game of that road trip, but the first game when you come back from an, an extended road trip and the, the Panthers schedule with it being so home heavy in this ladder, not so much half ladder, maybe like last 40% of the, season is very home heavy and coming out as flat as they have in having two days off too it's just it's just for the panthers it's just uh they shot themselves really in the foot early the the los angeles kings were really dominant early on the zone time cats the cats were not closing it on passing lanes alex line had to stand tall very early on and one thing that was very noticeable for the Los Angeles Kings was how they were conducting their zone exits where the Florida Panthers were unable to get their forecheck going. And, you know, where the Panthers, they have created a lot of their scoring opportunities this year off the forecheck, not on the rush. And the Kings were using that to their advantage to use stretch passes to clear the zone. And, that was mostly the first 30 minutes of the game and the and also getting a little bit lost in the neutral zone as well for 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 the Panthers um the LA Kings were were on the rush and with Andre Kopitar uh, trailing they lose a board battle and Quinn Byfield gets it to Kopitar people the everyone on uh, in red jerseys were puck watching and Kopitar beats Alex Lyon uh, backhand there. Um, and throughout the early parts of the game, it was really the fourth line for the Panthers who were really creating that energy for, for, for the cats, even at times throughout the game, when you see certain faceoffs conducted after like TV timeouts or even entering the uh the second period or the third period um you see you see the fourth line com- coming out for the cats to take the opening face off too so uh 
I mean, for for the Panthers, I mean, you, let's talk about the first uh, shorthanded goal that the Panthers gave up to Adrian Kempe. And uh, Ed Jovanowski was talking about on the broadcast during one of the intermissions is that's just one that you, instead of having it uh, pass backhand, which Rhino wasn't even looking to when he was trying to pass it to Brandon Montour, try to dip it out in the corner. You're, you're, you and, and get to work on the boards. Instead, you pass it back, Brandon and, and Lazat takes it, and him and Kempe go on a two on one. Brandon Montour did all that he can to dive to try to deflect the shot, but then beats Alex Lyon top shelf and down to two nothing. And it's, it's this was just also a weird game where the Panthers special teams, especially the man advantage, were hot coming into this one and the Panthers they didn't really commit a a penalty well they have they did commit a penalty but they didn't even give LA a chance to go on the man advantage until later in the game so they for the most part as well the Panthers played a clean game they had and they're avoiding going up a man but when you're giving up goals shorthanded it's just such a bat breaker and it it cancels out some of what you even try to do on the power play i mean let's just talk about what happened as well speaking of uh power play the the boarding against gus forsling where alex turcott's stick caught forsling's uh skate and crashes into the board, grabs his leg, and takes a little bit to skate off the ice. Scary moment for Gus. And but also, Aaron Ekblad needing to be a little smarter there with going after with Turka. I know the initial call wasn't called a penalty there, so maybe that's why Aaron Ekblad acted out in frustration, but. That also maybe has to do with if the initial call was uh, a five-minute major for boarding, that maybe Ekblad also wouldn't have reacted the way he he did because you're taking two minutes of a man advantage where if you score, the penalty isn't released. So, and just as the... Just as the four on four expires, the the Panthers turn it in over in their zone, and bodies are out of position, which allows Victor Arvidsson to draw to the net. Radko Gudis is facing Alex Line instead of instead of his body facing one shoulder towards the goal, one shoulder towards maybe the point to see through his peripherals if someone like Victor Arvidsson is cutting in. And with the lack of comebacks there, it's at that point it was game over. And even though the Panthers just attempted, it was it was something that you give up two shorthanded goals. And then the other one was on a rush where you lose a board battle. And playing 30 minutes of hockey is just not going to do that. And the, the Panthers know it, though. And that's the that's the tough part about a loss like Friday night. We're going to discuss more of the loss and the Panthers' comeback attempt in the next segment here on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. But first, we're going to tell you all about FanDuel. And the NFL playoffs are here. We're really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because they're the number one sports book in America, FanDuel. If you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. New customers, join today and get started with $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. 
Just sign up at fanduel.com slash locked on. FanDuel has all your favorite bets from the money line, point spreads to player props. Plus, you can even combine your bets for a chance for a bigger payout at with the same game parlay. All on the app, safe and super easy to use. So football fans don't miss out. Place your first five dollar bet to get one hundred fifty dollars in free bets, win or lose at fanduel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Back on the second segment here on the this Saturday edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, where the Florida Panthers are coming out of a four to three regulation loss at home against the Los Angeles Kings. So the Panthers, they uh they get swept by the LA Kings for the for for, for the second straight year in a row. I'm actually going to look up real quick uh, when um, the last time the Panthers won against the Los Angeles Kings. I actually did not uh, don't have that on the top of my head. But let's talk a little bit about just the. Uh, the comeback a little bit while I'm look, looking that looking that up, but we talked about how the Kings they were using their stretch passes to get out of the zone, so the Panthers weren't able to uh, get their four four check going, and the and thankfully for the fourth line, welcome back to the lineup, Eric Stahl. By the way, with with all the roster moves that the Panthers have had to make with activating Eric Stahl, putting Bobrovsky on injury reserve retroactive to last week just so that you could call up Matt Gutsta because Sergey Bobrovsky nor Spencer Knight uh, were ready. And there is a possibility that Sergey Bobrovsky could play tonight against the Boston Bruins, but credit to Eric Stahl on, on being right there behind the net where Phoenix Copley uh, fumbled the puck tried to backhand it to towards Nick Cousins. He misses, and then Ryan Lomberg, the Lamborghini right there to uh, beat Copley backhanded it. And, you know, L- L.A., their their goalie situation, I mean, Copley has wins under his belt, but the save percentage is not not the best out there. I mean, just uh, coming into the game, I believe his uh, – his uh save percentage was like like at 892 and the the panthers uh using their using their dominance of zone time really started towards really the second half of the game um you go you go down three nothing and then that's when the the light switch go- goes off for the panthers uh consistently with their active sticks speed through the neutral zone Man, um, going, winning their board battles uh, as well, and it's crazy because you see three nothing, and the lack of comebacks. You're like, wow, this is this is likely over. And then in the span of not even two minutes, the Panthers get two goals with the R- Lomberg one, and then uh, Brandon Montour very patient with not very patient with. Uh, having a, a shooting lane and just creeping in a little bit before slap shopping it slap shotting it back past uh phoenix copley and brandon montour there set a record for panthers defenseman as far as a point streak uh breaking uh both mackenzie Weger and keith yandel uh there and they were keep consistently keeping it in the zone every and a lot of times when the los angeles kings were even trying to clear clear the puck the the panthers were there right on the blue line to keep it in and then just dumping it and and getting to work consistently in, around the boards and then i mean you, you look at the the stat of trailing after two coming into the night of 0 16 and 1 and that was their chance to finally make it one and coming out with a shot on goal advantage of 19 to 11 on, on the period and consistently putting, um, having Phoenix Copley under duress as well. And 
still and the whole other other goalies looking like prime Dominic Kasha Brodor or Wah sometimes when when the Panthers dominate zone time it's just continue continues it, it's just been a theme this season when the Panthers have fallen behind and Oh, here's an interesting stat. Do you know how many takeaways the Panthers had last night? Zero. They weren't they weren't really intercepting passes to create rush chances. Um and also the Los Angeles Kings were also protecting Phoenix Copley very well in in this one because the the Kings had 19 blocks on the night and look at shot attempts, shot attempts. And this is in all situations, 80 to 52 and 48 of the shot attempts got to the net. 48 of the 80. While, while uh, 61 of them were not blocked and 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 then the rest after that miss flat out missed the net and, and Ekblad Aaron Ekblad twice in this game broke his stick um on, on a shot and that's happened a lot with Aaron Ekblad uh this season on like trying to time shots and just uh it's been it's been happening more than uh more than more than we've seen in recent years and actually, uh, uh, the page finally loaded of the last time the Florida Panthers beat the LA Kings back in uh, January 16th of 2020 in Sunrise, Florida. I mean, they didn't play in the 2021 season. They got swept last year, and they got swept uh, this year. So it's been a little bit of uh, a time since the Florida Panthers have uh, defeated the Los Angeles Kings. And, of course, one of those games included the, the game where everyone was out due to COVID, uh, back last December, uh, when the Omicron variant was spreading like wildfire, um, and we were wondering whether Paul Maurice was going to call a, a timeout later in the period with uh, the Kings consistently icing it and still having plenty of time when pulling Alex Lyon and bringing on the extra skater. But then, when you see Alex Alexander Barkov taking it alone through four LA Kings defenders. It's not going to be a surprise when he gets stripped. I think it was Adrian Kempe that stripped uh, Alexander Barkov and then Matt Roy scores on the empty netter. But the Panthers did. <laughs> they said not so fast when uh, Matthew Kachuk uh, with the extra extra man uh, from behind the net gets it to Carter Verhage and then he scores uh, without Phoenix Copley moving laterally to, to make a save and the net was open to cut it to 4-3, but it Again, too little, too late. And it's just a matter of the Panthers' uh, physicality and their 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 forecheck as well. And special teams. This was this was a stupid game when it came to special teams. Because it was you, you don't give up a goal on the pk but you give up two of them shorthanded and it's always something always something when it comes to special teams when one thing doesn't go when one thing goes right the other thing goes wrong and of course no power play goals and one of them including a five minute major that's gonna that's gonna hurt you that's uh that is definitely going to hurt you uh th throughout the throughout the season if if it's if you're unable to uh to get one of them go to get both of them going because the panthers are falling behind it the it's a uh, their their season is on the line i mean f after losing friday that's their fourth three game losing streak of the season they haven't had one three game winning streak you got to counter that with something. 
And it doesn't get any easier with the Boston Bruins coming to town. And we're going to discuss that next here on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Your Locked On Panthers, your daily podcast on the Florida Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Third and final segment here on this Saturday, January 20th edition of the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast. And for the Panthers, they don't, they get some help with the Islanders beating the Red Wings. And you might think the Islanders being ahead of the Panthers, why would the Panthers fans want them to win? It's because Detroit has uh, more games in hand and a better points percentage. So if you want one team to win there, it's the Islanders there. But in the grand scheme of things, if the Panthers don't string up a few wins, it really doesn't matter for, for, for them. And you have the best team in town coming tomorrow to, tonight in the Boston Bruins, who they lost Thursday night. Do you know how many times that the Boston Bruins have lost back-to-back games this season? Zero times. And the last time the Boston Bruins came to FLA Live Arena, I mean, the Panthers used their special teams to uh, to play a, a complete hockey game right right before Thanksgiving. We, and, and it's crazy because after that, I mean, that's when the Panthers were starting to blow leads in the third period. I mean, that was shortly before the St. Louis game and then, uh, and then the Western Canadian trip where they get off to a rough start in Edmonton as well. And you thought at, you would think at the time that the Panthers just – creating that big lead early on against the best team in the NHL, uh, that would have been the season-changing game. But not so much. It's uh, the, the Panthers' special team is a little bit of an enigma, really, where you don't know what you're going to get. You really don't know at this point. And... I, I put up that I spoke about that stat about the Boston Bruins uh, not losing two in a row because they lost Thursday night against the Tampa Bay Lightning. And the Bruins, they're going to run away with the President's Trophy more than likely. Let me see how many points more than they have than the next best team. Carolina has 10 less points than the Boston Bruins. A loss for Boston means really nothing for them. Uh, on Saturday, and I believe this is their last game as well before the All-Star break. And you know what? They haven't put up their foot off the gas. Uh, they haven't put their foot off the gas now. Um, before, why would they do it now? And also, Boston has two more games before the All-Star break. They play on the front end of a back-to-back in... Sunrise and then Carolina. So we don't know which goalie we're going to see. We might see Jeremy Swayman or we might see Linus Hallmark. Um, I'm going to guess because Florida is not the better team uh, than Carolina because their second end of a back to back is against Carolina. I, I would think that we would see Jeremy Swayman tonight for the Boston Bruins. Um, but still, the defense that that Boston has in front of them where you can put Charlie McAvoy on one pair and then Hampus Lindholm on the other. And they lead the NHL in goals against in, in the in the entire league. And they're they're doing it responsibly on the defensive side of the puck. And Pasternak's gonna David Pasternak's gonna get a pretty good uh new contract. He's 24 points better than the next best person on the team and 70 points through 37 games. So averaging almost like about like 1.5 points a game. Of course, Bergeron being back, David Krejci back, Brad Marchand, even though he missed a little bit of time, he's still second on the team in points. Amazing as well. And the fact that 
you can have Taylor Hall and your bottom six too. Even though Taylor Hall is not what he was hyped up to be when he was picked number one overall by the Edmonton Oilers and then winning the Hart Trophy with the New Jersey Devils. The fact that he's in a bottom six role too, or middle six, uh, depending on the night. Just the incredible depth that the Boston Bruins have. And this is where the Panthers need to be desperate. They need to be desperate in this one. We need to see the Matthew Kachucks of the world take over and the Alexander Barkovs take, just take over. And also, it doesn't help that we don't know who is starting in goal. And poor Alex Lyon, especially after the Pittsburgh game about how he felt like he let the team down, but you know the, the Panthers really didn't do him many favors too the whole night as well. Um, and he's... I'm I'm not I'm not totally down on Alex Lyon based on uh, this last week of games and the situation that the Panthers find themselves in in goal. So we might see Sergey Bobrovsky or Spencer Knight. I'm expecting a transactional Matt Gusta being sent down and having at least one of those guys playing, unless Paul Murray says we want to have them fresh for post All Star, which. Uh, the Panthers will be their next home game after this will be February 6th against Tampa Bay, Light, the Tampa Bay lightning. So my a good idea for you guys to, uh, of course, enter our contest still for uh locked on Panthers. But uh, speaking of all-star, I uh, want to say congratulations to Alexander Barkov. Um, Austin Matthews uh, did get a knee sprain uh, in their Wednesday night game against the New York Rangers. And he is out for all-star weekend, which means that, Somebody had to fill in, and the NHL doing the right thing, which is putting the hometown team, getting them an extra player there. Of course, we knew that Matthew Kachuk was always going to be part of the festivities as far as the Florida Panthers representative, which every team has to have one. And then the Panthers having their second person in in the All Star um, in the All Star game and the skills competition and. It's very exciting that uh, Barkov's going to get his chance to be around the hometown fans. Um, Barkov spoke to the media about how how people are going to see how great it is to be down here when they spent an extended period of time versus just coming here for just one game. And there, there's going to be just a lot going on in the area for the game. And, you know, I'm I'm going to mostly save that for Monday's episode where we talk about the Bruins game and then uh, discuss more about what is going on for All-Star Weekend and things that I'm looking forward to most. But I, I want to say congratulations to the captain. And the the All-Star jerseys are warming up to me a little more when, when going like old school reverse retro edition for for the for for the games and of course uh Valley Sports Florida also announced that they were doing all-star game re, um rewinds and um, throughout the week uh on January 30th they're going to play the 2000 all-star game where Pavel Burry scores three goals and an assist to win all-star game MVP uh January 31st, they're going to play the 2003 All-Star Game from Sunrise, Florida, where Ole Okunin got a goal and three assists. And then February 1st at 7 p.m., uh, the All-Star Game from Nashville, where Roberto Luongo, Aaron Ekblad, and Rob Yarmir Yager uh, represented the Florida Panthers in that one. And, you know, it's an exciting time for the Panthers to be hosting it and the festivities that are going to go on all across Broward County. And if you're going to be driving around, uh, your gas tank is not going to love you uh, much because of all the events that are just separated from each other all around uh, the county uh, there. So g just happy to see Bark off there. And I, I wish we could see Brandon Montour there as well, who's having just a career season. And that's also the flaw of three on three hockey for the All Star game, even though it's more exciting. Uh, more goals are scored. 
goalies aren't really trying, obviously. Uh, but it's a, it creates a little bit of a high flying power offense, which is what sells for all star games. I mean, you could even argue that not only Brandon Montour could be there, but Carter Hagee too. But there's only so many roster spots that you could fill. And there's arguments with like William Nylander not being there, Rasmus Dahlin, which the Atlantic Division does not have defensemen now. But I mean, Alexander Barkov is a Selkie Trophy winner, so. He is technically your uh, defense guy without being having the title defenseman. So just I'm excited for him. And I'm excited for you guys, too, uh, that are getting the chance to watch the All-Star game and seeing the captain there. So very, very happy there. But, you know, they still got one more game to take care of. And listen. This feels like a must win. You have to get two points. If if you and you know what, even even if you get a, a shootout win or overtime win, and you split the points before you get to overtime, but you end up getting that win. Who cares? Just find a way to get those two points because your season is on the line. Another another three game losing streak and on the books for the Panthers currently. And it's, uh, and again, to not counter that with a winning streak of their own, it's just, they're, they're, they're doing it to themselves. They're and and they might be in a position with five games left to go where they have to depend even more and more on teams losing. And that's not a place that you want to be. And Panthers are still well in control of their destiny with 31 games left. And on Sunday, we're going to discuss that and more, which we'll recap and we'll prepare for All-Star Weekend here in South Florida. But in the meantime, if you like what you're hearing, please subscribe to the podcast to be notified every single time the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast jumps into your podcast feed. Don't forget to also subscribe to the other shows on the Locked On NHL Network, including Locked On NHL, Locked On Fantasy Hockey, Flip Livingstone, and Steel Roden, and Locked On NHL Prospects. Thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. And for your second listen of the day, make sure to listen to today's episode of Locked On Sports Today. Peter Bukowski brings you a 30-minute or less podcast on the entirety of the sports scene with bringing in some local experts and providing the take of the day. Tune in to Locked On Sports Today on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast. So I'm Armando Velez, signing off. And you've been listening to Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day.